On this episode of Project Fast Fish, we'll look at how to get rid of a little bit of surface rust, how to temporarily store your sheet metal, and we crunch some numbers and do some math on the recent CUDA purchase. All right, so uh, I've already said that uh, we're going to be looking at what I'm doing with the uh, rusty trunk extensions. And uh, the idea here is that we're going to be kind of uh, uh, setting them up to be temporarily stored while I work on the rest of the vehicle itself. Now, when I got these extensions, they had a little bit of superficial rust on them, but they weren't in severe condition where they, I was like, hey, they need to be replaced. They just be cleaned up, etc. A little bit of surface rust can easily be taken care of with a little bit of friction and a little bit of chemical reaction. So here's what I used to get them to their current state. All right, first things first was I used a little bit of traditional 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, this is obviously used, this is used, but you can kind of get the idea that you, I kind of uh, sanded them down, got them down to a raw surface. Then I used a little bit of Osvo and mixed it in with about 50-50% water. So it's 50% Osvo, 50% water. Now, the thing about Osvo is, is that yes, Osvo is acidic, but what it does is it takes the surface rust and neutralizes it and um, uh, kind of turns it into like a zinc oxide, if you will. So it's no longer rust or iron oxide, all right? Now, uh, by doing that, um, it got the, uh, a lot of the surface rust down and neutralized it and left a little coating on there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a combination of the regular sandpaper and the DA sander and I'm kind of getting them up uh, finalized so that I can get them rinsed, I can get them ready for prep for uh, a little bit of etch primer, right? We're going to use etch primer, not epoxy primer because I like to be able to sand it down in the future, all right? And it doesn't need that kind of seal on it. Again, we're going to be temporarily storing these in a container uh, until such time as I'm ready to use them when I'm ready to work on the vehicle. All right, so here are the trunk extensions themselves. And as you can see there, you got still got a little bit of coating on here from the zinc oxide, what have you. I'm going to use the actual trunk pans to work on right now. And the reason for that is it's a flat surface. It's uh, easier to work with, et cetera, as opposed to using the small one. And of course, it makes for a little bit better video. So a uh, quick note on PPE. Um, if you want to use gloves for dealing with the Osmo because it is acidic, that's fine. But note that the acid in Osmo is no stronger than the acid in your regular orange juice. So uh, anytime I'm sanding, etc., I like to use a little nuisance dust mask. Uh, not a coffee filter, but it's a dust mask. It'll keep all that kind of uh, the dust particles and such down. We'll do both sides. And uh, we're going to speed things up and we'll get you to the next step here. I'm in the moment, and I got the feeling. I know that I am gonna give my all to win It's not about redemption It's all about the journey It's all about the road I take To drive the best in me So we are currently ready for self-etching primer. Now the idea of self-etching primer is to go ahead and give it a quick seal, all right, so that we can temporarily store it. Now for those that don't know, self-etching primer is acid-based. Now we've already done this in acid, so why are we doing a self-etching primer? You don't want to straight go onto direct metal with primer and without having something in there, right? Without having something between the primer and the metal. So the self-etching primer promotes adhesion between the regular base primer, whether that's high build or not, right? And of course the metal itself. Now there's an epoxy primer and a self-etching primer. An epoxy primer is good because it encapsulates or encapsulates 
the actual rust itself, okay, and the metal itself, which can be a good thing, right? But if you're gonna do any work post, like either sand it down for welding or you know sand it down at all, you wanna really avoid that epoxy primer, which is why I'm opting for the self-etching primer. So the self-etching primer is really simple. You can clean it with a xylol, uh, which you can pick up from the hardware store. And of course, you wanna degrease the surface with um, any kind of mineral spirits. I happen to have an odorless mineral spirit right here. So we're gonna get that process going for you. One last thing, I am gonna use a standard mechanics rag for this. I don't know if it's gonna leave lint, but it's not the final coat, so we can get away with it here. In the future, when it comes time for top coating and so on and so forth, we are gonna use the um, uh, proper paint pads and paint wipes and so on and so forth, but for right now, this mechanics rag should work sufficient for degreasing the surface. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and degrease the surface on video, but I am not gonna show spraying the paint because I don't want the paint all over my equipment. I got my coat of etch primer down and now I've got to do uh, both sides so I'm gonna let this dry to touch put this uh, away so I can get the next side down on the other pan I'm gonna turn it around and get the uh, other side of this pan and the other side of the other pan and I'm gonna hit my extensions and then we're gonna call it a day all right so here we come to the boring part we're looking at the math on the recent purchase now if you followed the last episode you found out that I went ahead and purchased a 72 uh, Plymouth Cuda off of eBay and uh, of course those that know the 72 Cuda was the performance model you had the Cuda and you had the Barracuda and of course the Cuda came with a 340 uh, four barrel carburetor uh, higher end intake and a few other options that made it slightly different than the actual Barracuda itself now the focus of this restoration project is going to be the Barracuda the 1973 so I'm okay with uh, parting with some of the items from the 72 so let's look at some of the math all right first things first the actual purchase price itself I ended up purchasing the uh, CUDA the 72 and won the eBay auction for three thousand six hundred dollars all right I didn't have to pay anything for the car hauling because we were able to borrow that from a good buddy of ours and then I offered to buy food for everybody but nobody wanted anything on the way down or what have you so that made it real easy I ended up just costing me an extra forty dollars in fuel because the trip was about two two and a half hours down two two and a half hours back and of course right now we know that fuel prices are a little bit lower than they've been so all you got to do is take the three thousand six hundred dollar purchase price plus the forty dollars and that's what it costs to get me back here at the home with the vehicle itself now when i got back i went ahead and sold the 340 small block and the 727 transmission that came with it the person that bought that bought it for $750 so quickly doing the math on that you got $3,640 less $750 gives us a grand total of $2,890 I hope you can see it on the screen right all right now looking at the extra value these are things that I would have had to purchase elsewhere and had them sent in, right? Or had them shipped over or what have you. So we're just gonna assume the retail price or the going price for some of these items to show that, hey, this was included in the purchase price itself for the 73, all right? When I purchased the 72. So looking at the body itself, the body came with some good rear used floor pans, all right? The floor pans had been spot welded out, or I say were spot weld drilled out and they have holes in them and they need some minor modifications to make them perfect to fit inside the vehicle. You can worry about that when it comes time to install those. Um, but they should be able to get spot welded, or I'm sorry, to be um, uh, welded back in without a problem. So we're gonna go there. Uh, when you looked at used floor pans for that vehicle, for the 73 Cuda, or Barracuda, uh, was looking at roughly $150. So there's some uh, $150 I would have had to e uh, spend extra. On top of that, the vehicle came with uh, two-piece trunk deck okay and trunk extensions these were both 
newer year one parts, right? So they came from year one. So I just went straight to year one and got the prices. All right, for the trunk pans, the two halves would have been about $350 plus shipping. Didn't have to pay for shipping, right? And then of course the trunk pans extensions were about $150 each, all right? Now here's the kicker, all right? The, uh, on the 73, sand had been sitting in the vehicle for a little bit and uh, we allowed that sand to sit a little bit longer than it should and we had some problems with some rot on the inner door structure. Of course, rot on the outer door structure is fine because that's just a skin, you can replace that and you're good to go. But the inner door structure had a lot of compound and complex bins which I didn't feel comfortable with patching up. Now, when I looked up prices for uh, inner door structures and doors out there and about on the internet, uh, I found that used doors were actually more expensive than the new doors. Used doors were going for $800. Now, I know I'm gonna have to get some skins, but we'll just assume that uh, $800 can be added on to the overall value of the purchase of this vehicle. Of course, less shipping. So let's do some math here, right? Looking at our running total of $2,890, all right? Less all the body parts. That's the footwell pans, the trunk pans, the trunk pan extensions, and of course the inner door structure used at $800 gives the total um, for the body 1,600 and a running total of down to 1290. You can see where we're going at here, right? Let's look at the glass. Um, remember that body guy that I told you ran off with some body parts? Yeah, he also ran off with some glass as well. So I had to replace those. So when you look at the side panel glass that we lost, it was one of the doors that we lost the glass for, that was $140. The two quarters, that's the left quarter and the right quarter, right? Uh, those were $80 a piece, okay? So take our running total at $1,290 less $300, and we're now looking at $990, all right? Let's go ahead and talk about the interior. Now, there are multiple things on this interior that I can reuse, and of course, I got a lot of good things from the 73. So we're going to talk about the things that were misplaced over time. First things first, the dash core. We had a dash core for 73, but it has long since well, it needs a lot of extra love. So this core that we got with the 72 is in much better shape. I can use that as a dash core, okay, to send off when I get the new dash pad made, okay? The going rate for that is $200. Now, to look at that on other online sources and get one used for just the metal frame core itself is $200. So there you go, $200. The gauge cluster itself, okay, the gauge cluster, now it doesn't have the rally package, it's got the standard base gauge cluster, and that was on both vehicles. Both vehicles came with the standard uh, gauge cluster, uh, $200. The cluster housing, $100. And of course, the indicator housing, $100. That brings the total to $600 for the usable interior components. Now, we're not talking about the seats and so on and so forth because I have actually really good shaped seats for the 73. And we'll do an episode where we reupholster re them and what have you. But, you know, going rate three, uh, $600. All right. That brings our total value, right, to $390. You see where I'm going with this? So when I purchased the vehicle, there was a lot of things that can be reused. Uh, that I didn't have to pay for shipping, I didn't have to buy those extra, so on and so forth. I know what I have, they're in my hands, and I know I'm ready to use them. So yeah, the th going theme here is what can we do to raise extra money and where can we find value in things? Well, one of the things that we happen to find value of lying around the house, and maybe you have things lying around in your shop, your shed, or within your access that you can go ahead and use to uh, resell, to add funding to your project, is uh, an engine and uh, I happen to have a 318 block that uh, was uh, left over uh, from sitting in the Barracuda itself. Of course we have the original 318 that's been bored and stroked with a pretty nasty stroke on there right and a pretty nasty bore and a pretty nasty cam and, and you've seen that video on my other channel. Now we are going to do a few episodes on a rebuild of a 318. We're going to do a mild stroke on it. We're going to resell this bad boy and put all the money that we make from it back into the restoration of Project Fast Fish. So I'll catch you on the next episode.